reminder every week to do that. But those of us uh, who maybe only have communion once a month, let's make sure we at least tell people to prepare once a month. Uh, but I'd like to see us have everybody prepared every week. But yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, I think we'd all want to have like 50 people in prayer before worship, but that's not going to happen. Or yeah. It could. It might. Um, We're almost, uh, I, I'm, I'm out of chairs already in my office. So, <laughs> yeah. so we have a prayer time, 45 minutes. back to prayer time. Like, there are things that come through prayer time that are very pertinent in your worship. Mm-hmm. And I tie that prayer time in. People know that the place they are being prepared before they mm-hmm. arrive. And I want them to know that. That they're being prepared through prayer, even though they're not actually engaged. Sure. And the choir is also um, we're, we're shifting the culture of our choir to be a um, not a rehearsal perform group, mm-hmm. but a There you go. Okay, well, um, okay, go. What? This is the last one. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about uh, the, the scripture before, you know, having that out ahead of time so that people were prepared. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen a lot of churches where they, they have a series so that they publish it, you know, maybe a month in advance or two <laughs> are, how people are, are you know, midweek texting the pastor saying, okay, you, here's, here's my question. And you <laughs> might actually, you might gain some extra illustrations, you might gain some extra <laughs> insights as people, we kind of talk about it together. Well, that's great. Well, we have uh, just a few minutes left before our time is up here. Uh, so what I would like to do is I would like to consecrate you, okay? I would like to... Uh, to uh, tell you to wash your clothes, <laughs> right? Or, or uh, metaphorically, obviously, but uh, to, to help you. And I want you to be prepared uh, because in just a couple hours, we're going to go worship our God uh, as a general assembly together. And it's going to be a glorious time. And I hope that perhaps is in this little bit of preparation that we do right here, that you will have a, a, a heightened sense of awareness of what it is we're doing today. So with that... Uh, would you bow your heads and let's pray. Uh, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that your Holy Spirit would come and make each one of us holy. In fact, you've already made us holy through Jesus Christ, through his blood, through his death, through his resurrection. But Lord, I pray and ask now that you would help each person in their heart know that they are holy children of you, that you have chosen them that you have called them your own, and that you have called us here in this place in Colorado to come and worship you. And, and uh, So, Lord, we pray that you would, uh, would wash over us. And as we feel the clothes on our bodies, Lord, that we would feel your presence cleansing us again. Uh, we, are, we know we're a sinful people, Lord. And so we need to be... Uh, we need to be cleansed by you, made clean by you, and in fact, we are. And so, Lord, uh, help us to be mindful now as we go from this place to, uh, to go and be prepared to worship you this afternoon. This is not a little thing that we're doing today. And so, Lord, we pray that it would be a very meaningful time together as we worship you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our God. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen.
Hey guys, don't forget, purchase your copy of The Beauty of the Local Church, the Westminster Society Journal, Volume 3. It is now available on Amazon for $16. Purchase your copy today. Greetings. This is Steve Salyards, the author of The GA Junkie, and here are some Presbyterian history notes for the week of July 7th. Sunday, July 7th. On this date in 1559, John Knox was elected Minister of Edinburgh by the people, having made his final return to Scotland from Geneva just over two months earlier. Mary, the Queen Regent, did not agree with the choice of the people, but had little immediate recourse. Monday, July 8th. Diarca H. Allen was born on this day in 1808. He trained in theology at Andover Seminary, taught briefly in Charleston, South Carolina, and at Marietta College in Ohio. He joined the faculty of Lane Seminary in Cincinnati as one of the early professors, spending the rest of his career there teaching systematic theology. Tuesday, July 9th, in 1838, the noted songwriter and musician Philip Bliss was born. He was raised in a Methodist family and united with the Baptist Church as a young man. His wife Lucy was a devout Presbyterian, and Philip followed her and was an active Presbyterian when not traveling for evangelistic meetings, particularly those with Dwight L. Moody and Major Daniel Whittle. Wednesday, July 10th. We note the anniversary of the birth of Toyohiko Kagawa in 1888. He was a Japanese social activist and Christian pacifist who was converted and taught by PCUS missionaries as a young man. He attended Tokyo Presbyterian College and studied at both Kobe and Princeton theological seminaries. He lived and worked with the poor, advocated for better living conditions and labor laws, and wrote numerous popular and academic books and articles about improving their lives. The emperor posthumously awarded him Japan's highest honor, the Order of the Sacred Treasure, first class. Thursday, July 11th, 1779, another social reformer, Andrew Mitchell Thompson, was born in Scotland. He was a pastor who spent the second half of his career at churches in Edinburgh. He was a leader of the Evangelical Party in the Church of Scotland and worked for reforms in the church, including working against lay patronage. In the city, he worked to improve education and against slavery in the British colonies. He was largely responsible for an improved psalmody in Scottish church worship and wrote several widely used tunes. He was a friend and colleague of Thomas Chalmers, and Chalmers was his ecclesiastical successor. Friday, July 12th. In 1854, the first Reformed Presbyterian Church was organized in Boston. The Reformed Presbyterians traced their roots back to the Covenanters in Scotland and settled primarily in New York and Pennsylvania in the colonies, with only a little spread to the Northeast. From this early group in Boston uh, that was organized in 1854, there was steady growth in this area. Staying with the year 1854, on this date, Robert P. Weish was born into slavery in North Carolina. He did some early schooling locally, then had the opportunity to attend, to attend Biddle Memorial Institute in Charlotte for his preparatory training, his undergraduate uh, education in teaching, and his theological training. Upon completing his education, he was called to what was known as the Seventh Street Presbyterian Church in Charlotte, where he would serve for his entire career of nearly 40 years. He was the stated clerk of the Catawba Presbytery, and then the stated clerk of the Synod of Catawba. He served many years as the chairman of the board Biddle University, the predecessor to the present-day Johnson C. Smith University. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? You see, when I was trying to get my podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. I mean, like, a lot. Like, a lot of questions. Questions like, how do I record an episode? Or, how do I get my show into all the apps that people use to listen to podcasts? How do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it is completely 100% free, and 
and super, super, super easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that is exactly what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. So if you always wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to Anchor. Go to anchor.fm slash start and join me in a diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I cannot wait to hear your podcast. You have reached the end of yet another episode from The Ear. We hope that God's word remains on the ears of the listeners. We pray that this podcast would urge you to go forth and spread his good news to the world. Thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. See you at the next episode. God bless you and may his glory shine upon you.